Hello and welcome to today's video. So I'm a little bit sick, so if I've got some coughs and some splutters, I'm really sorry about that. I'll do my best to keep it to a minimum, but I do need to be able to breathe to be able to do this video. So I'll try and keep that to a minimum, but as you can see, it's Christmas. This is my nan's Christmas tree. Pretty nice, huh? Um, today I want to talk to you about the, the boring basics, the, the fundamental things that are, they're just really boring, you know, and You'll probably skip over some of these things. And I just, I'm just bringing this video to you today to just remind you of some of these things and how powerful they actually are. Because these are the things that you've probably studied to the point of exhaustion and then they've just sort of gone on the back burner and you're not maybe putting as much effort into it as potentially you could. And these are just some things that pretty universally, like obviously if I'm going to give you a suggestion that doesn't work for you, then don't do it. You know, that's, that's, that's the beauty of, of self-help on the internet. Like if I say something that's not for you, then don't do it. That's fine. But I want to share with you some things that are like the, the basics. These are things that most people will be able to do. These are things that are quite easy. And honestly, these are things that are so boring. Like they're just, they're just the boring, boring things. But the thing is, that's where a lot of the results are. It's in, the, in these boring things that we do consistently. So First one, movement. How boring. You know, be alive, actually do things to the level that you're able. You know, I had chronic fatigue syndrome. I know what it's like not having much energy. I get it. But even then, I was able to manage a small walk when I kind of got a few of my ducks in a row. Whatever you can do movement wise is, is such an underrated thing. Movement is so helpful on so many different levels. It supports your digestive system. Movement externally is movement internally. Whenever you move, like your physical body, it's moving your digestive system as well. It's, it's helping it. Your lymphatic system does not have a pump. The way that you move your lymphatic fluid through your body is with the, so you've got big powerful muscles in the sides of your legs that you use when you walk. These are big pumps for your lymphatic system and your lungs. Your lungs, think when you're breathing, you push your diaphragm down. So you, you're massaging your whole digestive system, but you've got big lymph node patches on either side of your chest. And this is how you pump it. Even just walking, you know, simple movement. You're using your legs, you're getting your heart rate up a little bit, you're breathing more and maybe slightly deeper as well. Very, very profound, like stupidly simple, like almost boring. Why am I even making a video about it? Because this is, this is where the results are. Like this is one of these easy, simple things that you can do that's really, really helpful. Movement. I don't even classify this as exercise, but in exercise, there are some things that you can also do as well. And like I said, maybe not for everyone. I can't do this right now. This is not, not healing looks like for me at this stage, but it will be very soon. And if you can do this, you would honestly be stupid not to. You'd be really, really silly to not take advantage of this. Some kind of weight training or something that is, um, some form of resistance training that is causing you to develop uh, an increased muscle mass. Bigger muscle mass benefits your body in so many different ways. You have more mitochondria. You have more potential to produce energy. You burn more calories passively. So you will have a lower, uh, a lower BMI, like naturally. Like you it just makes you strong. It just makes you a strong and resilient individual. There's so many benefits with regards to, um, longevity and, and anti-aging principles. Your muscles actually produce painkilling substances, immunomodulating substances, but they don't do it if they're not worked. You need to move them for them to secrete these substances. So again, movement is helpful, but weight training or some kind of resistance training is even better if you can do it. And if you can't, like me, then don't. That's okay. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to do everything. Just do what you can where you're, wherever you're at. Next, very underrated thing is you don't have to be perfect with your diet. I actually think a lot of disease that comes from looking at like our food supply comes more so from not so much that the food is bad. Like, yeah, I get it. It is like, yeah, there's a lot of vegetable oils and things. You have MSG, you have a lot of additives. It's very processed and refined. I think the biggest problem comes from the fact, not that we eat these things, but these have replaced other things in our diet. And if we can bring those things that have been replaced back to our diet, that's what's really important. And these things look, look like ancestral nutrition. And this basically follows the, the lines of something cooked, something raw, nose to tail eating as far as animal products go, and some type of fermented food. Ancestrally, like that is what all cultures have in their, in their diets. They have some kind of cooked food. They have some kind of raw food. They eat animal products from nose to tail. So that includes like organ meats, that includes like bone broth and stocks and things like that. And they have some type of fermented food. For some people that's 
um, kvass or um, sauerkraut for some people it's kefir whatever it is they have some kind of fermented food if you get these basics right so cooked raw nose to tail animal products fermented food you've covered the basics you know if you're getting at least these things every single day just put some chocolate on the top like you're going to be fine have a pizza like i don't care you'll be you genuinely honestly you will be okay it's it it's the fact that these things have crowded out these other core components that the diet should have so if all you're eating is like toast and 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 ramen noodles and um and takeaways like that's a problem if you're having some of those things on top of this solid diet you know this let's say like 60 80 percent you're having pate on your toast you're having grass-fed butter you have a cup of meat stock two or three times a week you have uh, some vegetable juice or some fruit juice and you take a, a probiotic or you eat i don't know I, I i would say i really like kimchi and that's probably a really nice one because it's a bit spicy you know put those things in too and it's, it's it's easy you know these are super easy things you can do just bring them into your diet on a frequent doesn't even have to be daily let's say weekly basis like really underrated and it's it's simple one other thing you can do sleep sleep is oh, sleep is so underrated i saw a study and it was showing you if if you miss one hour of sleep it affects your driving the same the same level as being over the limit as far as alcohol is concerned you have a i think it was like a 50 to a 60 percent increased risk of having a cardiovascular event the day after a bad night of sleep one hour one hour missing and that's if you sleep a good night of sleep most nights and then one night you miss one hour most people are not doing that they're not getting a good night's sleep every single night they're chronically underslept and underrested and if you have a chronic disease or a chronic health problem you might need more like i slept 11 hours last night that's a lot of time to be asleep but that's what my body asked for and that's what i gave it and if it needs a nap you bet i'll be giving it a nap as well but it's it's these like basic things you know oh i'm tired maybe i should sleep more maybe i should rest more underrated but really really important do that and it will it will it will pay you dividends finally i just want to talk about supplementation the trick with supplements you're going to see a lot of people say a lot of amazing things about a lot of different supplements the trick is usually there's two three maybe up to five supplements that you that you could be taking that will be life-changing that will be really really helpful for you if you're taking a supplement and you don't really feel it you don't know if it's doing anything for you it probably isn't it's probably not what you need to be taking when i'm working with somebody the biggest metric as to whether a supplement is working or not is do you feel it and maybe if they don't feel it it's okay let's stop taking it now do you feel that it's missing and if not, you don't need it. It's really not that helpful. It's not a needle mover for you. So as far as supplements go, make sure that you actually need them and take the ones that make a difference. If you don't feel it, you probably don't need it. So just skip it. Save yourself the money. Go and spend it on your family or something else where it would be would be better spent. I really think a minimalist approach is very, very helpful when it, when it comes to healing. So they're my, they're my tips for you move move more if you can train do some kind of training build your muscle mass it's helpful um your movement is going to help with lymphatic flow it's going to help with it helps with so many things you know your whole body needs oxygen to work if you move more you breathe more you get more oxygen that's healing your diet does not have to be perfect but make sure you've got the four essential components some cooked food some raw food nose to tail animal products and some kind of fermented food every ancestral culture on planet earth had these in their diets if you don't have it in yours that is probably going to be a problem for you so you, we're not just the smartest um, society that earth has ever had there have been plenty of very intelligent societies before us and they all did this so we should maybe consider doing it too and uh and finally rest sleep you 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 don't know how much sleep your body needs you don't know how much rest you need it tells you and you should really really listen if you can sleep more then do it i it's the 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 it's the biggest shortcut to get where you want to go with whatever your health goals are the more rest you have the faster you heal very simple equation so take that rest you deserve it and it is important i always say sleep like you're getting paid to because it is honestly the most valuable thing that you can that you can do as far as taking care of yourself get your sleep right and even if all the other things aren't really that good you'll have a hard time not healing 
I hope that's really helpful. I hope you had a really good Christmas, and I hope you're well. If you have any questions, as always, please leave me them as a comment. I'll be more than happy to get back to you. Do tag me if you're responding on Facebook, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.